लाइक सब्सक्राइब एंड रिंग द बेल आईकॉन एंड डोंट फर्गेट टू शेयर 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 वेलकम टू द फर्स्ट एपिसोड ऑफ माई न्यू सीरीज This series is going to be about battles fought in history where I'll be showing you tactical representations and simulations of the battlegrounds. We will start from the pre-colonial battles and come to the Indo-Pak wars. So let's begin with our episode. So today's battle takes place 2600 to 700 years ago that is 800 BCE when India was ruled by the Mahajanapadas. An Assyrian queen called Semiramis or Shamuramat invaded India with an enormous army. but was defeated by an indian king on the banks of the river indus or sindhu this account is written by greek historians when they had come to persia with alexander note historians question whether this battle took place or no because of the large number of troops mentioned in the text and other unbelievable things but also this is one of the oldest and first invasion in india in which wonderful strategies were used and that's what we want Assyria is an ancient kingdom of the Middle East. Semiramis was a queen of the kingdom. When Alexander conquered Persia and was about to come to India, the indigenous people told this story to the Greeks and they wrote it. So the names in this story are very different. The Greeks used the Hellenized script, so the names they wrote were different from the original. So Semiramis is actually Shamuramat or Shamiram. Her husband, the emperor, was dead and their son was too small. so she became the regent of the empire stabrobates as mentioned by the greeks was the king whom semiramis fought in india stabrobates is a hellenized name the indian name is probably satyavrat or suprati he was the king of the ikshvaku dynasty the puranas mention a king suprati who ruled nine generations before king prasenjit from 600 bce so supratik is likely to be the one who fought her according to what the persians told the greeks semiramis was preparing for her grand invasion of india for two years her army was as follows 3 million foot soldiers 500000 horsemen 100000 chariots and 100000 camels covered with seven skins of black oxen and fake movable trunks to imitate elephants so her army total was 3700 that is 37 lakhs that's a lot so the historians have estimated the number to be 30000 foot infantry 5000 horsemen 1000 chariots and 1000 camels making the total 37000 The Assyrians were known for the psychological warfare. They were known to be very brutal with their enemies. They would use siege equipment a lot and their weapons were made up of iron. Unfortunately, the number of the army is unknown, but it is written that it was much larger than the Assyrians. The Indians back then fought in the Vedic style. Their army was divided into four groups. chariots cavalry infantry and elephants hence called the chaturanga sena the indians fought in battle formations called vyuhas cavalry and infantry were used but when fighting foreigners the brahmastra of the indians were the elephants we saw both the leaders we looked at their armies so now let's head to the battle grounds The battle took place on the banks of the river Sindhu. As the Assyrians came from Bactria, Supratik was preparing for his defense. As Shamuramat came to Punjab, Supratik me- sent a messenger to her asking her why she was attacking him as he had not done her anything wrong. He told her to go back and warned her that if she attacks him but is defeated, then he won't spare her life. He also called the gods to witness the battle. She laughed and decided to do the same with him. and as an answer she started preparing for the battle the dawn of the next day came shankhas were blown and the battle began 
the ships were manned with infantry and were pushed into the water. After a stubborn defense by the Indians, a large number of the Indian ships were sunk and the victory fell into Samuramat's share. A large number of Indians were taken as prisoners. Supratik retreated from the bank. So, did the Indians lose? No. Supratik used the tactic now known as feigned retreat, in which an army fakes retreat, causing the opponent to charge deeper into the enemy side, where a large number of army awaits the enemy, eventually surrounding and defeating the enemy. After the win, Samuramat captured prisoners from the nearby cities and ordered her men to cross the river and go for the kill. As she crossed the river, her fake elephant battalion attacked Supratik's army, going deeper and deeper into the enemy ranks. Some Azerian defectors came to Supratik and gave out the secret of the camels. Understanding this, Supratik ordered his cavalry to charge into the camel. But the smell of the camels and the oxen skin confused and terrified the horses and they ran in the opposite direction, throwing off their riders. The situation was nasty. Any confusion would have let the stronger army lose. Shamuramat with the rest of the army reinforced the camels. As the main army came deeper and deeper, Supratik, finding the right moment, led an amazing elephant charge from the right flank. The camels got scared of the elephants and threw their riders down, running away. The rest of the Indian army now charged on the main Azerian army. The large beasts stamped their way across the Azerians. The battle which was being fought on the land was now being fought on the carcasses. The Azerians, completely terrified, fled stamping and pushing their own men. Supratik made his way to Shamurabad and wounded her arm with an arrow. As she turned, her his spear hit her in the back, but it was not too deep, so she survived and retreated. The bulk of the Azerians reached the river, but their weight was so much that the bridge broke and many of them fell in the water. As a large part of her army crossed the river, Shamurama cut the ropes of the bridge, drowning hundreds of Azerians and Indians. Victorious Supratik watched the Azerians run. His advisors told him not to cross the river. After an exchange of prisoners, Shamurama returned to her capital, injured and broke. Supratik acted according to the Dhanurved. He warned the enemy, told him to go back, but he didn't listen, so he defeated him in battle. With this, I end today's episode over here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash the bell icon down there. Also, share a lot. Follow me on Instagram. See you in the next episode. Signing out, Vyom Not.